Now before we all leave, we should at home pray two raka'ah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? Pray two raka'ah, salat al-safar. Pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make this trip easy for us and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept it from us and you know make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Pray for yourselves, those people who are traveling and also at the same time pray for your family, your children or whoever you're leaving behind that may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep them safe. And in other words, pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For like I mentioned, for those of us who are going to Madinah al Munawwara, we won't be needing an ihram. For those of us who are going to Makkah al Mukarramah, you need an ihram. Don't put it in your suitcase. Because once you check in the suitcase in San Francisco, it doesn't come out until Jeddah. And you need to put on your ihram before you arrive Jeddah. So make sure your ihram is with you uh, in your handbag. Also, another piece of advice, with all due respect to the differences of opinions, the majority of the scholars say that the ihram needs to be put on before you arrive Jeddah, before you pass the miqat. And that is two hours before you arrive Jeddah on the airplane. How many of us have put on ihram before? Alhamdulillah. Some hands, not all of them though. How many of us put on an ihram every day? None of us. What am I trying to say? It's not easy. Right? It's, you're doing it for the first time. You might be doing it for the second time, third time, but it's not easy. You know, you, you kind of need to get around. And ask those people who did it for the first time, it was, it was truly an experience. Um, and no matter how embarrassed you were, you might have asked someone for a little bit of help or you might have asked for a little guidance in putting on your ihram. But regardless, don't wait to put it on on the plane because there's not enough space on the plane. See, that's what I'm trying to get at. And you, know, you, you barely have enough space to stand there really, you know, airplanes, especially now. So now you, you have an ihram which is this big and you're trying to tie it for the first time. It's difficult, right? So please, please, whatever you do, make sure you have your ihram in your handbag and wherever you stop, you know, your stopover is, whether it's in Frankfurt or London or Dubai or Cairo or wherever it may be, make sure you get off. You know, you have an hour, two hours, three hours, you have enough time if you can find a shower. Now obviously to put on, to take a shower before you put on an ihram is sunnah. So that's why if you can find a shower, subhanAllah, you should find a shower, you should uh, put on your ihram and um, you know, put on your ihram basically there. If you can't find a shower, then you do wudu and then you put on your ihram. But please make sure you put it on on the airport before you get on the final you know, leg to Jeddah. Because if you don't, you will regret it. It's not easy, it's a little difficult. And then some people will tell you, oh don't worry, you can put it on in Jeddah. With all due respect, like I mentioned earlier, the majority of the scholars, the majority of them, when I say majority, I'm talking about 99.9% .9 of the scholars say that the ihram needs to be put on before you pass over miqat, which means you should put on your ihram before that. So please don't take anyone's word for the fact that you're going to put on your ihram on the plane or, or, or in Jeddah. Because when you arrive in Jeddah, you will see that everyone around you is already in the state of ihram and they have put it on before. So we want to, you know, it's the one hajj, we want to do it right, we want to do it in a manner which is best and which is the most correct. So please make sure we put on our ihram on time uh, before we arrive there, you know, before we basically get on the plane. Don't feel shy. Right? You don't feel shy because you, you, you're, you, know, you know, a good part of your front body, you know, everything will be exposed. So now you might feel a little shy, it might be a little difficult for you to put on your ihram. There will be a lot of people on that airport, especially if you're flying out of London or Frankfurt, who will, you know, check you out and say, what the heck is this? But don't worry about that, you know, you want to make sure we do our hajj right, regardless of what everyone has to say. Um, Alhamdulillah, I had the opportunity of going in August uh, for Umrah. And um, I flew into London Heathrow and I had time, I took a shower. And, and I, uh, I actually had two hours. So I took a shower and I put on my regular clothes. I had to pray my salat. I prayed my salat and I said, okay, you know, when it's time to get on the plane, I will put on my haram and get on the plane. Uh, when I went inside uh, to put on my haram, I realized there was another shower there. So just because it's sunnah to do a shower right before you put on haram, I did I immediately took another shower and put on my haram. And like, you know, as soon as I walked out, there were people looking at me. You know, the majority of the people there don't know what's happening. 
Um, but you know, everyone, you know, that's that's you want to do it correctly. So I had on my I had on my ihram before I got uh, on the plane. So please make sure don't worry about those people um, that are that are around you and that are looking at you. Make sure you put on your ihram. Now, when you put on your ihram, uh, you can wear your watch, you can wear glasses, you can even wear sunglasses. Your hearing aid, everything is correct. You your head has to remain exposed. So caps or anything needs to come off. You cannot wear socks. You cannot wear socks. And very, very important, this bone needs to remain exposed, this bone here. So when you buy your sandals, the bone that's on top of your foot right here, when you buy your sandals or slippers, whatever it may be, please make sure that that bone of yours is exposed. By putting on the ihram, you don't come into the state of ihram. Right, you've just put on an ihram, and I'll get to that inshallah, how you put on your ihram. So now you've arrived at some airport, you've either showered or you've done wudu, and now it's time to put on your ihram. Now once you have put on the ihram, like I said, you cannot cut your nails, no hair cutting, no mustache trimming, uh, beard trimming shouldn't happen in the first place, but if you do, then you know, that it stops right then and there. And now once you've either made ghusl or you've done wudu, uh, you've put on your ihram, and now you will pray two raka'ah. Right? Two raka'ah for the ihram, two raka'ah for the intention, two raka'ah uh, to, for the, um, you know, preparing for the ihram. Now when you are doing, please keep this in mind, when you are praying the two raka'ah, you will, just in this one, you know, one case, you will take one end of the ihram and put it on your head. So you will cover your head. As soon as the two raka'ah are over, you will no longer, you will immediately take it off. Because after that, you cannot put anything on your head. You know, your head, your head, face, everything has to remain exposed. It is masnoon, it is sunnah to pray Suratul Kafirun, Qul Ya Ayyuhal Kafirun in the first raka'ah, and Suratul Ikhlas, Qul Huwallahu Ahad in the second raka'ah. And then the best dua to make at this time, once you have completed the two raka'ah, you will read, you will pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the best dua to make is Allahumma inna nas'aluka rilaka wal jannah. Oh Allah, we ask you for Jannah. Oh Allah, we ask you for your uh, Rida and, and Jannah. Now, although you have put on your Ihram and you have prayed to Raka'ah, you are not yet a Muharim. You are not yet still in the state of Ihram. You don't become a Muharim. You are not in the state of Ihram until you say Labbaik. Get on the plane, wait until the plane starts to move, as soon as it's in the air, then you make the intention and then you say labbaik. The reason is, once you have made the intention, once you have said labbaik, you cannot take off that ihram until you have performed the umrah. Or, if you were not able to go for umrah, you cannot take off that ihram until someone has done a dumb for you in Mecca. And it has happened. Can we just get some chairs? It has happened previously where people have made their intentions, have said labbaik, obviously put on their haram everything, and the plane didn't fly. And they were not able to go. Or the plane was delayed by four, five, six, ten hours. So in that case, you have to be in the state of ihram. Obviously, we shouldn't be complaining. The reason is because when people, you know, 50, 100, 200 years ago used to go for hajj, they used to put on their ihram a few weeks because they would pass the miqat and it would take them a long time before they reached Mecca. So they would be in the state of ihram before they actually went. But in our case, because it's very difficult for us to make that sabr, and you know, if, if that flight doesn't go, you're in trouble. You, you basically cannot take off your ihram. Um, for as many hours as it is, whether it be 24, 48, 72 hours, until a dumb is done for you in, in Mecca. So please make sure that uh, you put on, you've put on your ihram, you've made the dua, but you only make the intention and you say labbaik once the plane is, is in the air. You know, you know your own situation, so please make sure that you say the labbaik once, once the plane is in, air, is in the air. Now obviously, uh, once you've put on your ihram, uh, you only have the ihram on. You cannot wear any t-shirts, no underwear, nothing is allowed. One sheet of white cloth at the bottom and one sheet of white cloth at the top. Usually we hear and they say unstitched, two unstitched pieces of white cloth. 
That unstitched means that it's two pieces of white cloth, but not like the regular day-to-day -day clothes that we wear. That is why if someone fears that the ihram that a person will be wearing in the bottom portion of the body will somehow somewhere open up, it is correct for that person to have it sewn through the middle. That will still considered to be jais. It will be khilafi awla, it will not be the best, but it will still be considered, it will still, it'll still be jais. Because if your ihram is open and someone sees your satr, it's haram. To sew it together is not haram, it's only disliked. So obviously to do something disliked is better than doing something haram. So if someone fears that you know, their ihram might open up or something like that, then in that case it is correct for a person to sew, um, to sew the ihram.